So hello everybody and happy Monday, how are you today? In today's video we are going to talk about visualizations. I don't talk about visualizations a lot even though it's my favorite subject. So I thought that why not? Let's do it. Uh, if you want to know more about visualizations just let me know in the comment box and I will do more videos about it. In today's video we are going to talk about how to visualize growth in a different way. This is a, a job that I did for a customer and they loved it so much so I said like maybe it's helpful for somebody else. So let's go, let's do it. So Power BI, we are with the North Wind data set. The one that we always use is completely free. There's a link down below if you want to start using it. You will be able to get this file in the community downloads at corval.com. So you're set. You're set if you want to try it. Okay. So visualizing growth. More often than not, this is what my customers ask me to graphic or growth. So this is what my customers ask me to do. So it says, okay, I want to have a country. This uh, Northwind dataset doesn't have a location table, but it has the locations of the customers on the customer table. So we have a country and then we have sales and then they want to have a, a table more often than not. They want to see the numbers, especially, you know, you're talking with finance people. And then we want to have same period last year. This is same period last year. It means that if we are now four months into the year, it will be four months previous year. And then they want to have the year over year. And sometimes you can put an icon if they want it, like a KPI up and down, or if you think it's, you know, it suits for the purpose of the story that you're trying to tell, which is great. In this case, this story, the main story for my customers, so they are buying a raw product and they want to know, okay, where are we buying it from? They're buying it from all over the world and they want to see where they're increasing the buying and where they are decreasing it. And because that was the story, I wanted to visualize it in another way. So this is what I did for them. We're going to use this table, but instead of having a table, we're going to visualize it with a map. I used a shape map. Now, there are a few tricks or things that you need to know about shape maps. So if they don't work incorrectly for you, I'll show you that at the end of the video. Now let's pretend that everything works well, okay? Just for the demo, in case you just want to get this done fast and this, do something else. So here we have, when you click on shape maps, the first map that it appears is the US map. How horrible is that? How about Power BI team? You give us the world. Yeah, but no, it is the US. And then if you go to shape, they have added at the end some other countries, but the, in the world map is not there, which is weird. So I have to grab it online. I don't remember where I grab it from, but you will get it on the community downloads at Corval.com. So you're going to get that too, so you don't have to go and look around. So we're going to import that. You click here, add map, world countries. And uh, as you can see, it visualizes the entire wall and it's zoomed. We don't want to see the Antarctica, so how about we zoom in? So it will zoom in on the places where there's actual values, which is very, very useful. And then it allows you to zoom in out manually, which is also very, very useful. And this is what you get. Okay, so if we go here, we don't want sales. Now it's doing sales as a color saturation. We actually want to have year over year. And then as a tooltip, we want to have sales and uh, same period last year, in case you know you want to have that action number, those that information. When you put it like that, what this does is it, get, it takes the numbers and it, then it does a color saturation, like a gradient, you know? It says, okay, the higher the number, the greener, the lower the number, the redder, but the, you don't know. And one of the big flaws of this is that it's missing a legend. I'll show you how to do a legend, especially for these. I wish with, with some hope that the Power BI team will fix that. Anyhow, I don't want to have a gradient. I want to know because the story here is you're bu buying more from here and you're buying less from there. This is it. So I want to have if it's above zero, green, if it's below zero, red. Or lighter green or orange or whatever. Maybe it's not bad to buy not buy from a country, okay? So in this case, it was not bad not to buy. So red was not a good color. But in this case, I'm going to stick to the red just so you can see it. So minimum zero, maximum zero. 
So now if a value is above zero, it will color it green, otherwise zero, uh, red. And as you can see, the Northwind data set is going so, so, so well that everything is green. But I know this data by heart now. If you go to November 1997, there were some, some places, you know, where the sales were not that great. Not really, because you know, if you hover over Spain, you'll see that there were no sales in Spain in uh, the previous year. That's why it's red, otherwise it's just green everywhere. But you can see, now you can see visually where you're buying more from and where you're buying less from. Which I thought it was, like, for them it was like very, very useful because then, they, you know, they could zoom in by the subcontinent and continent and, and then they, it was very clear where they were buying more or less from. Now, I've done this, I know that red means less, green means more. Again, they didn't want to have red, they want to have another green color. So it needs to have a legend. This map does not have a legend. Please, Power BI, give us a legend. Um, especially a legend in this case. So we're going to create a legend ourselves. So I'm going to create a small table, enter data. And this is... Um, legend legend id and then we are going to put here let me change that because then when i do that it's going to haunt me legend oh legend id okay so now here uh, by increased one by in the crease minus one and then here is legend load so now we've just created a custom table that it will give us one uh, for by an increase and minus one for by an decrease it's loading into the model here we have it, and what we need to do now is to create a uh, KPI. So we're going to do KPI legend, and we say if um, sum of legend ID is equal one, then unichar, and this is 11.044, otherwise unichar 11.044. And let me show you. So we go to our legend, and then where did my KPI go? Oh, discount. <laughs> it's always a mystery where my measures go. Okay, there. So you see, it gets the um, like a traffic light, and we don't want totals in this table. No totals, please. And we want to color this. Um, so we go here to the KPI legend, conditional format, informed color, and we say if. Uh, This is for a legend, legend ID. So if the highest value is zero, if the lowest value is zero, by an decrease, by an increase, you get the legend that you want. And then you can do like, I love the, the border. <laughs> it's so good, so good. Uh, we put it in there. Put it like that, and then here you put or whatever name you want to give it, whatever it makes sense in your language, and then you stick it there somewhere that I think you know for this JSON I have everything over exaggerated because this is what I use for my demos here on YouTube.
and now we need to be able to see it. So probably you wouldn't have this so highlighted as I have it there, but you know, you, you can then format this in the, in the way that makes sense to you. But now if I click on June 19, 2017, what happened? July 19, oh, I couldn't take July 19, 2017, then they will see green and red, and then here there is the KPI that says green and red, what it means, okay, so they can see, oh, it means that we purchase less of, mm. okay, so this is great, this is absolutely, I mean, it is a great way to show growth. Now, you have to be very careful with shape maps, because if I remove the filter here, you'll see that the United States does not have uh, sales, but these, the, the data set does have sales on the United States. Let me show you. So I go to customer's country, I put sales, and then you see that you know the United States stands for most of the sales for the Northwind data set. We can put it as a table so it's even more clear. You have it here and here it doesn't show anything and this is why you see that it says country united states of america in the data set in the northwind data set is called usa so because there is a mismatch the shape map does not know that usa is the united states of america so you have to go and fix it that in the background which you know you have to do a, bit, a little bit of merge in a little bit of there are different ways i have now this table uh, as a table so I can just you know merge and see what is missing and change it it's a little bit of a pain but the best way to have it is with the three digit code because that is foolproof uh, but otherwise you you know you will go in here customers and then you'll go to country and then you will pick whatever to replace values here you put us and then united states of america close and apply and hopefully we will see some united states sales and obviously you have to do these for all countries to make sure that all the countries are visualized on here so it's a little bit of a pity now you see that it's green right and then you see United States of America, as it should be. So you have to be careful with that, but otherwise it's a gorgeous visualization. So wish for an international map, or team, if you're listening, for a legend. And then, I don't know, maybe some kind of flag that this is... You can't do that. Okay, we'll fix that for ourselves. So I have to stop talking. I hope this was uh, useful for you that you know you'll find the use cases where you can apply this it is a very very powerful way to visualize growth and with that said i'll see you again on wednesday bye